Hey everyone, it's good to gather together. We're going to talk about finding the fire of God in the desert season. I'm really excited about this word because I, I came down to be with the Lord the other day and I, I was actually, I was kind of discouraged and talking to him a little bit about desert seasons. And, and he just took me to a pass, passage of scripture and began to unfold it. Because you see, when we're in desert seasons, we usually talk about trying to find the water, okay? Trying to find, we know that in the desert, where it's dry, it's arid, it's barren. We need water. In the natural, we need water. In the spiritual, we need the living water. But the Lord began to speak to me about finding his fire, finding that passion, finding the fire of God in the desert season. And I was like, as he unpacked it, I was just like, wow, this is this is amazing. So I want to encourage you guys to hit that share button, let others know about this. I really feel like it's a It's a word from the Lord for now that there's so many of us who need this right now. You're in that desert and you've been so focused searching on the water that you have not seen the fire. And that's really important. In your desert season, are you so focused on trying to find the water that you walked right past the fire of God? Okay, Exodus 3 verses one to four. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to the mountain of God, to Horeb. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush, and he looked, and the bush burned with fire, but the bush was not consumed. So Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him from out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Okay, so let's begin to unpack this because there's so much power in it. There's so much, um, it, I, I don't know. I, I just think it's amazing. Um, all right, verse one, let's just start verse one. Okay, he, we know that Moses kept, he was a shepherd, he had left Egypt and he had eventually gotten married to Zephora and he was keeping a flock. So he was a shepherd keeping the flock of his father-in-law's father-in-law was a priest, okay? So his father-in-law knew the ways of God. Okay, just kind of put that aside. You see, when, when Moses ran away from Egypt, God set him into training in the wilderness and right into the home of a priest. Isn't that amazing? Right into the home of a very, very wise man we see later on. So anyways, so Moses has this flock and he is traveling to the far side, just say far. Okay, he's traveling to the far side of the desert. So he had to go across the desert, through the sand, through the heat, to the mountain of God. Horeb. Okay. Now Horeb is thought to be the same place as Mount Sinai where Moses would later receive the 10 commandments. So you see these meetings with God. Okay. Coming in the circle through his life. Um, But also remember that desert seasons can be the training grounds for future assignments. Okay. So sometimes when God takes us to a certain spot in one season, it's actually training ground. We might come back to the spot in a different season, like right here, It's going to be a meeting with God, but Moses comes back later to receive the Ten Commandments. So again, desert seasons can be the training ground for future assignments. If we understand that, if we grab onto that key concept, then the desert doesn't become such a place of desolation. It actually becomes a place of meeting with God. So what do your desert seasons look like? Do do you focus on the desolation or... Do you ask the Lord to train and equip you for your future assignment? Okay, it's really easy just to focus on the dry and desolation. Everything's so brown and yuck and I'm hot and I'm tired and I'm thirsty. But yet in the, in the midst of all that, our, of our grumbling and complaining, sometimes we miss what God's doing through that season. Okay, let's go on to verse two. Remembering that Moses was traveling through the desert to the far side of the mountain, okay? Verse two, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush, and he looked, Moses looked, just say he looked, he looked, 
In other words, his attention was captured. You know, some people, when they would see angels, they would fall to the ground. Others enter into conversation. Um, he, he looked, and then it says, verse three, so Moses said, so he looked, and he saw the bush wasn't being um, consumed. It captured his attention. Then Moses said, he made a very intentional decision. I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Okay, I will now turn aside, just say turn aside. Okay, so he went to the far, he was on his way to the far side of the desert. He saw the bush, he looked. Okay, and then he said he will now turn aside. Okay, if we're getting through the desert, if we are so focused on our plan to get to the other side of the desert, glory, hallelujah, amen, then what happens is if we're so focused on that, sometimes we can miss God in the midst or the middle of the desert. You see, Moses intentionally turned aside to explore what was happening. Again, he was intentional, which meant he messed up his trip or his schedule. He took his focus off the sheep. He paid attention. Okay, and this is really important because sometimes we can be, get so focused on getting from point A to point B, we can miss the fire of God that's in the middle. Okay, so there's a trap in the desert season that we're so focused on finding water or refreshing in the desert that we miss the fire of God. And I know I'm guilty of that. I've been so focused on my schedule, my agenda, or the way that I think things would work or where I think I'm going to the far side of the mountain that I have actually missed the fire of God along the route. I've missed a meeting with God along the route. I used to tease my husband when we first got married. He, he would have his set plan in the morning and nothing good to tear that plan. And we're all guilty of that at times, okay? And so I would say to Mark, oh, let's go to the beach. Now I've got to do this, 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 and this. Like there wasn't room to just say, I'm going to turn aside. He's not like that anymore, but you know, but we all have areas in our life where we're like that, okay? And so, you know, so if we get like that going through the desert season, we can miss the fire of God. That's what I'm saying. We can miss that meeting with God. So verse four, then God spoke. Okay, so let me read all of verse four again. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him from out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses. Okay, so. Then God spoke. Okay, God did not speak until he saw, until he, God, God saw that Moses had actually turned aside and had gone to see this great sight. In fact, he knew there was something different in this moment. And rather than just glance and walk right past, because I'm trying to get to the water, I'm trying to get to the far side, I'm trying to get to the greener pastures, I, I've got a destination in my head. He caught that something was different and he made a conscious decision to turn aside and when god saw this is when god spoke you see moses if this is the bush you know right here and moses is walking by god didn't say hey moses come on over here no it took Moses the intentionality on the part of moses to stop to turn aside to explore it was at that point that god spoke so again god didn't speak when moses wasn't paying attention God spoke when Moses made an intentional decision to turn aside from his route. So what I want to say, and this is what the Lord was just so speaking to me, is that when we feel like we're in a desert, there is the, a draw. We want to get through that desert so fast. We want to get to the lush green pastures. We want to get to the provision of God that sometimes we miss the God encounters along the way, the fire of God along the way, the burning passion of God along the way, the signs, wonders, and miracles that he wants to show us in the desert. See, burning bushes weren't uncommon in the desert. Moses could have just gone by that, oh, it's another burning bush. But he took note that the bush was not being consumed. He took note that something was off from what is in the natural. And he stopped to look. So we need to be aware going through our desert seasons. We need to be intentional about looking for that which is a little different and taking time to stop and inquire of the Lord because it's possible 
that in that stop, in that pause, that we will actually encounter the fire of God in the desert. And this encounter, as you all know, it changed the trajectory of where Moses thought he was headed. But it took the stop in the encounter with God and the desert season to do that. So where are you in your life? Are you in a desert season? Become very, very intentional about looking, about stopping, about inquiring of the Lord. Don't get so busy running for the water that you bypass the fire. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we just confess. We, we come right before you. We say, Lord, we're so sorry for the times when we've been so focused on our plans, on our agenda, on our schedule or just getting through the desert season, that we see something that, that looks a little different. We just keep running. And Lord, we don't stop to see if it's you. And because of that, we've missed the fire. And God, we just ask your forgiveness for that. Because God, right now, we, we just stop and we're like, God, we're in that desert season. Yes, we need the living water. We need the lush green pastures. We need the provision. We need the rest. And the dust can seem overwhelming. That the far stretches of the desert can be overwhelming. But God, we long for your fire. We long for those meetings with you. And so Father, right now we make a choice to intentionally look for you in the desert seasons, to intentionally look for a bush that's on fire but not consumed, to intentionally veer off our path to see if it's you trusting you God with those encounters because father as dry and thirsty as we can be in the desert seasons we certainly don't want to miss the fire of God hmm. we don't want to miss that meeting with you so come Lord open our eyes to see God help us to have that intentionality to explore like Moses did that we make that intentional decision as Moses said I will now turn aside and see this great sight that turning aside brought him face to face with Lord God Almighty and changed his trajectory, what he thought was his trajectory, and moved him into what you had in planned for him. So, Lord, we say yes and amen. We're your sons, your daughters. We just want to be with you. We want to serve you. We want to lead how you've called us to lead. So, we just look to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I just want to say some of you guys really um, feel like you're stuck in that desert season and you can't get out. I want to encourage you to go to the website. It's ruthhendrickson.com. And that's where you can connect with the Masha team, which is our international uh, healing, emotional healing and deliverance team. And we want to get you unstuck because God wants you moving through that desert. He wants you able to see the burning bushes. And he also wants you to successfully get to the other side. So if you need a little help, that's where you can go to connect with the Masha team. As I said earlier, uh, please share this. And thanks for joining me today. It's been such a blessing to be with you as we continue on that journey. And today, if you're in that desert season, look for that burning bush. And man, take time to stop and turn aside because it could just be a meeting with God.